James Harden, the third overall pick in the 2009 NBA Draft, a sixth man of the year winner in 2012, a multiple time scoring champ averaging 36 per game over one season, an MVP, and a future Hall of Famer, was ranked just 21st in his 2007 high school class. He spent a few years at Arizona State before declaring for the draft, but his evident scoring prowess and game-changing talent was evident right away. He's now the third star in a Clippers team hoping to win their first championship in their franchise's history, with the likes of fellow hometown superstars Paul George, Russell Westbrook, and Kawhi Leonard. Harden transitioned into more of a playmaking point guard role in his last few stops in Philadelphia and LA, but he is still arguably a top 20 player in the league when healthy. With all that said, let's look at what happened to every high school player ranked higher than James Harden in high school and see what they're up to now in 2024. Hope you enjoy the video. At number one, we have Kevin Love. He's been an excellent NBA player throughout his career, spent his first six seasons with Minnesota, and then spent around eight and a half with Cleveland, winning the championship there, and he was a crucial part of Cleveland's 2016 championship run. Then he signed with the Heat during the 2023 season after being released by the Cavs midway through this past season, and now he is on the Heat again this season, hopefully looking to get another championship before he retires. But yeah, Love has been an excellent player throughout his career, and like I said, he was crucial to Cleveland winning that 2016 championship. At number two, we have Eric Gordon. He played one year at Indiana and then was drafted by the Clippers in the 2008 draft. He played excellent with the Clippers, but was then traded to New Orleans, and he spent quite a few years there, although injuries were always a struggle, and he was really good when he played, but that was the main thing for him, staying healthy. He then had some really productive seasons in Houston. He won sixth man of the year. He was a crucial part of that team, making the Western Conference Finals in 2018 and almost knocking off the Kevin Durant Warriors. But yeah, he played with the Rockets for quite a while, and then the Clippers picked him up, in the 2023 season so he spent around a quarter of a season there and then this past year he was picked up by the phoenix sun so he's looking to win a championship with phoenix this year as their six man at number three we have oj mayo he spent one season with usc and then he spent his first two seasons in the nba with memphis where he averaged 18 points per game then he played with memphis for two more years before spending the 2013 season with dallas his last three years in the NBA were spent with Milwaukee until 2016, but then he was suspended from the NBA for two years when he violated the league's anti-drug program. He spent quite a few years playing overseas as well, but is now signing with the Flying Leopards in the CBA. At number four, we have Kyle Zingler. He played four years at Duke with a season in Spain and was then with Detroit for a couple years until midway through the 2015 season. He was then traded to Oklahoma City where he spent his next three years there until the 2018 season. He was then away from the Thunder in August 2018 after he signed with the Spanish ACB club one month later. But now he is reportedly retired from basketball and that report came out in October 2019. However, it's unclear what he's up to now in 2024. So if any of you guys know, let me know down in the comments below. At number five, we have Derek Rose. He played one year at Memphis and was then the number one overall pick in the 2008 NBA draft. He quickly rose onto the scene and became an MVP by his third season in 2011, and he helped the Bulls make the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Miami Heat, and he really just helped revitalize the Bulls franchise overall in the post-Michael Jordan era. Unfortunately, he just had so many injuries throughout his career, but he's had a few kind of career resurgences here and there. One was in 2018 um, and 2019 in Minnesota under his Chicago Bulls head coach Tom Thibodeau. And including he's had some stints with the Knicks as well, and he kind of saw a career resurgence there too. But then he filed the rotation for the Knicks, and now this season he is on Memphis. He's kind of been getting some playing time here and there, but I think his career after this season is relatively unknown, at least where he's going to go and who could sign him and things like that. But yeah, I think D. Rose, though, still is a lot left in the tank, and I'd be curious to see where he ends up signing next season after his 2024 stint with Memphis is over. At number six, we have Nolan Smith. He had a prominent four-year career at Duke, winning three ACC championships and an NCAA championship in 2010. He was then drafted by the Trailblazers 21st overall in the 2011 NBA draft and spent four seasons playing professional basketball overall. He was a part of Duke's staff in various roles from 2016 to 2022, and he is currently an assistant men's basketball coach at the University of Louisville. 
At number 7, we have Austin Freeman. He had a great four-year career at Georgetown, and he averaged 13.7 points per game on 49.8% from the field there. He also got on multiple All-Big East team selections. Then, after he played on various G League and overseas pro teams for six years after Georgetown. He also spent three years as an assistant coach at his former high school, DeMatha Catholic, and he is currently in his first season as the director of basketball operations for Morgan State University's men's team. At number eight, we have Michael Beasley. He had a dominant college season at Kansas State and was then the number two overall pick in the 2008 draft. He played 11 seasons in the NBA from 2008 to 2019 with Miami, Minnesota, Phoenix, Houston, Milwaukee, the Knicks, and the Lakers. He had his best year in Minnesota where he averaged 19 points per game in his third season. He's currently a free agent and waiting for an opportunity to arise, but he has played for two teams in the CBA and a team in Puerto Rico over the past couple of years. At number 9, we have Patrick Patterson. He played three seasons with Kentucky and then played 11 seasons in the NBA from 2010 to 2021 with the Rockets, Kings, Raptors, Thunder, and the Clippers. He was a solid stretch four throughout his career. He recently had his high school jersey retired, but I'm not really sure what he's up to now or if he's planning on returning to the NBA at some point. At number 10, we have Nick Calathis. He attended the University of Florida from 2007 to 2009, but he has had a prominent career overseas and then spent two seasons with the Memphis Grizzlies in 2014 and 2015. But overall, he's been playing pro ball in Turkey for the past two seasons after previously playing for FC Barcelona in 2021 and 2022. And previously before that, he played in Greece from 2015 to 2020. At number 11, we have Corey Fisher. He played at Villanova from 2007 to 2011. He averaged 12 points per game while making two all Big East teams. Then he played for various pro teams overseas from 2012 to 2022, but he mostly played in France. After a long pro career, he recently returned to be on the Villanova men's coaching staff in September 2023. At number 12, we have Costa Kufos. He played for Ohio State for one season and was then drafted by the Jazz and spent his first two NBA seasons there. He played with Minnesota for one season, Denver for three, the Grizzlies for two seasons, and lastly with Sacramento for four seasons. He then played overseas in Moscow and most recently played with the London Lions in the UK during the 2023 season. However, it's unclear what team he's on or what he's doing in 2024. At number 13, we have Cole Aldrich. He spent three years with Kansas and was then drafted by the New Orleans Hornets, but had his first two seasons with OKC. He then played with Houston, Sacramento, and the Knicks. And then after, he spent one season with the Clippers and his last two with Minnesota in 2017 and 2018. However, he was then waived in July 2018 amidst a three-year $22 million deal with the Timberwolves. He then played one season in China in 2019, and it looks like he was on a podcast recently with a YouTube channel called Mercury in July 2023, and then he also interviewed with a local Minneapolis news station in December 2023 about the Timberwolves season so far, but it looks like now he's living in his hometown near Minneapolis with his wife and family. At number 14, we have J.J. Hickson. He played eight years in the NBA from 2008 to 2016. He spent three seasons with Cleveland, but also played with Portland and Sacramento. Then he was with Denver for two and a half seasons, and then with the Wizards for 15 games. He also played pro in China for two years. However, he was arrested for robbery in July 2018, and that was pretty much the latest news I could find, and I don't really know what he's doing now in 2024. At number 15, we have Corey Stokes. He played four years at Villanova from 2008 to 2011. Then he played pro in Germany and for the Celtics G League team in the 2012 season. But he last played pro in Sweden in 2013. I honestly couldn't find much for what he's doing now. However, I found his LinkedIn profile and it says that he's an administrative clerk at the Hudson County Correction Center and it looks like he used to be a teacher as well. At number 16, we have Taylor King. He played one year at Duke and then one year with Villanova in 2010. Currently, he is a professional shooting coach and has a website with information about his playing career and how you can set up a training session with him. The website says he played pro basketball for seven seasons in 11 countries. 
At number 17, we have Dante Green. He was at Syracuse for one year and then played four seasons in the NBA with Sacramento from 2008 to 2012. He also played pro in Puerto Rico, Lebanon, and the Dominican Republic. He's been playing in the Big Three League for the past three years and has been a co-captain for the Killer Threes from the 2021 to the 2023 seasons. At number 18, we have Blake Griffin. He spent one year at Oklahoma, but then missed his entire rookie season. However, he did win rookie of the year in 2010, and ended up having a pretty solid playing career overall, was a multiple time all-star, was a dunk champion, was one of the most athletic players in the league during his prime. He last played with the Celtics during the 2023 season, and I did see some articles that Derek White and Peyton Pritchard were begging him to come back. But he hasn't really signed with the team so far this season, so I think it's unlikely that he signs with anyone, at least for the 2024 playoffs. But we will see, I guess, over the next few months if Blake Griffin decides to return to the NBA. At number 19, we have Jay Lucas. He played at both the University of Florida and University of Texas during his college basketball career. After he played in the Baltic Basketball League and the G League over three pro seasons. He's also been on Texas men's basketball coaching staff from 2013 to 2019. Additionally, Lucas was on Kentucky staff in 2020 and 2021, but he is currently an associate head coach at Duke and he has been on Duke's coaching staff since May, 2022. And at number 20, we have Etwan Moore. He last played with the Suns in 2021, but overall, he's had a really, really solid pro career. Has always been a decent three-point shooter and defender, and he's played with teams like the Bulls and the Pelicans primarily, but yeah, he's also played with the Magic too, and he actually did sign with them before the 2022 season, but he never ended up playing a game for Orlando. I don't know really where his playing career stands at at some point, but I still think he could be a really good veteran for either some young teams or some championship contenders. But yeah, I still think he might have a place in the league if he wants to come back. Because like I said, pretty solid three-point shooter and defender throughout his career. And I think he'd be a really good vet for pretty much any team. So those were the 20 high school players ranked higher than James Harden in high school. This is a series kind of that I want to bring back that I kind of sort of tried to start in the summer. But I think it's something that might end up doing well on this channel. And yeah, I'd like to hear your guys' feedback on it. Um, I have some other ideas in mind for this series. So just let me know what you guys think of this series. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.